Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to talk about Putnam 2019 number B4. This is a problem that involves a, a set of differential equations, and what we're gonna do is dive in and try to do something with the equations given to try to figure out the solution to the problem. So the question states, consider the set of functions f that are twice continuously differentiable for points um, x, y, where x and y are both greater than or equal to one, and satisfy this set of differential equations. Um, for each function in this family, we'll consider m of f, which is the minimum over s greater than or equal to one of this quantity right here. And the problem asks to determine what this minimum actually is and show that it doesn't depend on what f is. Uh, so it seems kind of like a complicated problem, uh, but what we can do is start at least by recognizing that we have these two differential equations, which I'll call one and two, um, and notice that the first one is information about the first derivative while the second one is about second derivatives. So maybe we can take the first one and differentiate it um, in order to get information about the second derivative and relationships between the different second derivatives uh, and then use that together with two. But of course we have a choice of what to do with number one. We can differentiate with respect to x or differentiate with respect to y. Um, let's do both and do some accounting and see what comes up. Uh, so maybe we'll start with taking the derivative with respect to x. So if we do that, um, we'll get uh, by the product rule, fx plus x fxx. And we're differentiating this quantity with respect to x. y is a constant, so we get y fxy. And I want to make a note here, because of the stipulation that we're twice continuously differentiable, the mixed partials are actually equal. fxy and fyx are the same. So I'll use fxy throughout any time there's a fyx. Um, okay, so we have y fxy, and that's going to equal uh, the derivative of this side with respect to x, uh, which is going to involve um, a product rule as well, um, and that'll be y ln xy plus uh, 1 over xy times xy times y, uh, which is y. Okay, um, so we get an equation like this when we differentiate with respect to x. Now let's make an observation here. The derivative, uh, if you look at this expression here, um, if we interchange the role of y and x, we get the exact same thing. This is a symmetric equation about x and y. So the derivative with respect to y will look exactly like this, where we replace all the x's with y's and vice versa. So here we'll get fy plus y fyy plus x, and I'll write fxy because of this, equals um, x ln xy plus x. Um, and then we have our equation two as well, which gives us things in terms of the second derivative, which is x squared fxx um, plus y squared fyy equals xy. Okay, great. Um, so if we're, our goal is to use these somehow to um, figure out some more information about the function at hand, we notice we have an x squared fx x here, and we have an x f of x, x here, so we model, might as well multiply this equation by x to maybe eliminate things. So we'll multiply by x throughout, and we get this, and then similarly we'll multiply the second equation by y, and get something like this. All right, so let's make some observations. Uh, so if we want to eliminate this expression on the left hand side, we need to add these and subtract this off. So if you call this equation three and equation four, this is equation two originally. Um, let's observe what happens when we take three, uh, add four and subtract two. All right, so first of all, these two contributions here match up with this contribution on the left from number two. So all of this in red is gone. Okay, um, so secondly, the contribution of xy here 
is eliminated with one of the contributions of xy on the right hand side here. And finally, when we add these two, we get x ln of xy. So the sum of these two is one of these contributions on the right over here. So we can um, eliminate these two if we eliminate one of these. Okay, so now if we simplify all of that, uh, we get that xy or 2xy fxy is xy ln xy plus xy. Great, so one of the things we're able to do by putting things in terms of the second derivatives is now if we divide by xy, which we can do because x and y are both greater than or equal to one, we get that fxy is a half of this quantity right here. Excellent. So at least we're at a point where we have the mixed partial fxy um, as an explicit expression in terms of x and y. It's a half of ln x plus ln of y plus one. All right, so we're part of the way of getting some information, uh, but we need to do something with this expression right here to figure out this m of f uh, minimum expression that we were supposed to deal with in the first place. Uh, now, we look at this expression, it doesn't seem like at, for face value that we can express it in terms of this, but I wanna give an analogy um, in the case that we have, say, one variable to think about what something like this might look like. So this looks like the difference of uh, the function at two different values if we spe specify at one argument and just look at this first piece right here. So imagine this was a one variable thing and we had something like fs plus one minus fs. And we had information about just one of these derivatives like the derivative with respect to x. Now the question is, does this relate somehow to this expression? And it does by the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, this difference is the integral from s to s plus one of this function uh, dx. Okay, so one thing we can do then is notice that this expression looks like these expressions here, but we have something a little bit different. We've subtracted uh, the difference when the argument on the right is off by one. And then we've taken that and subtracted itself where we change the left argument by one. So what we'll have is that this difference here is actually the iterated integral from s to s plus one and s to s plus one again of this mixed partial dy dx. And that's by applying the fundamental theorem of calculus twice um, in the fashion that we just mentioned before. So this expression underlined in blue is precisely this thing and we have, luckily, an expression for this mixed partial, so we can write this down. This is a half ln x plus ln y plus one dy dx. Okay, pretty cool. Now the question is, what is this integral? We can separate it into a few pieces. The integral of this thing, the integral of this thing, and the integral of this thing. The integral of one over this interval is the uh, length of, or sorry, the area of this region. This is a square of uh, side length one. And so the integral of this constant is one. And so we get a contribution of a half for uh, this one here. And then we have the integral of ln of x over this region and ln of y over this region. And by the symmetry of this interval, that's twice the integral of just one of them. And since we have this half, we can eliminate it and say this is the integral from s to s plus one of the integral from s to s plus one of ln of x dy dx. Okay, so this is the thing that we're trying to find the minimum of. Um, so we can actually find an explicit expression for this thing 
First of all, this is constant with respect to y, so this integral drops. It's the, the length of the interval, which is 1 times ln of x. Uh, so this is the integral from s to s plus 1 of ln of x dx. And we can find an explicit expression for what this is. I won't do the indefinite integral um, explicitly, uh, or at least the calculation of it. This is sort of um, something one does in calculus. It turns out to be x times ln of x minus 1. And we're evaluating this expression from s to s plus 1. And that's a half plus s plus 1 ln of s plus 1 minus s plus 1, and then minus s ln s minus s. So if we put that all together, we get, um, I'm going to well write all that down. So we get minus s plus 1, and then minus s ln s minus s, which gives us a plus s. Um, okay, so we're left with this expression here which I will rewrite. We don't need this partial anymore, so I'll get rid of it. Uh, the negative s and the s go away. We have a minus a half as our constant. And then we have, um, I can group the s ln s plus 1 and s ln s together. Um, so we get s ln of s plus 1 over s, and then uh, plus ln of s plus 1. So this is an explicit expression for what this underlined expression is in terms of f. And notice, first of all, we've addressed one question. This is independent of f. And also, we're looking at this expression over s greater than or equal to 1, and we notice that each of the pieces here is increasing. So the minimum happens exactly when s is 1. If we plug that in, we get ln of... Uh, 2 plus ln of 2 minus a half, which gives us a minimum of 2 ln 2 minus 1 half. Great. So I think the moral of the story in this problem is it looks really complicated to begin with. You're given a lot of information, but you can streamline it by writing the information you have in terms of things that look quite similar to each other which in this case turned out to be um, changing the first expression to be something about second derivatives. Then, once we had this um, expression for the mixed partial f of f xy, um, we were able to write the expression that we're trying to minimize in terms of that using uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So an interesting problem, and I think the moral, especially with a problem like this, is to try to dive in and streamline and make things look similar to be able to get um, some leeway. And then recognize when you see something that looks potentially familiar, like the fundamental theorem of calculus, to dive in and try to use it. Great. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, click the like button and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this.